The very grim fact is that I am no longer 29 years old, and when you get old, you start to look back. Um, I had taken my children, just very briefly, I'd taken, I love telling stories to my children at night. Uh, uh, well, I used to. They don't want me to do it anymore. And I used to tell them childhood stories, and they asked me to bring them back to where I grew up, and we went. And there was very little evidence that I had ever lived there or that my parents and grandparents had been there. And all of a sudden it felt like a ghost story wanting to come out. And so that was kind of the genesis of it a few years back. And it's been in my mind ever since. And then I had a bunch of uh, lonely nights in a wonderful Paris apartment. I was doing an opera in Paris, Marriage of Figaro, and, and, and I had lots of free time and I started to write it then. It was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it's, it's a massive responsibility and it calls on everything you can possibly summon as an actor to, to sort of absorb and internalize as much as you can from the writing and from, from what we can learn and sort of intuit about these people. Um, but then also to be free enough to have ownership of it and not feel uh, a sense of sort of checking in with, with James, and, and, and James is such an incredible sort of um, the container that he creates for us as actors and the freedom I think he wanted for us to have ownership over this and, and, and gave it to us. So it was, it was really... Uh, uh, your emotion yesterday was like very, very touching and uh, it is... Who wouldn't? It was an honor. Um, my husband is Jewish, and we spoke a great deal about uh, what this would mean uh, to represent an art, but also what it would mean for our family. My mother-in-law, who, who passed recently, was simply the greatest mother, Jewish mother, I've ever seen. And her legacy, excuse me, her legacy, excuse me, her legacy influences my life in profound ways that I am truly, truly grateful for. And the hand of a Jewish mother will guide the rest of my life. And if I have done one thing in terms of capturing the depth of that love and that connection and that, I, I, I honestly don't, I, I won't even attempt to put it into words because it is beyond. And that's why I'm so grateful to cinema because it allows you to say things without words. Um, and I just thank you for giving me the opportunity to say Jacqueline Banks was absolutely one of my heroes and, um, and for bringing a part of my life and my family to this work. Bonjour, Gabriel Abrao, de Culturista de Chili. Euh, je voudrais vous demander, dans votre film, on voit que... I think we're in serious trouble today, don't you? Take a look at the world. I mean, what happened? How'd we get here? How'd we get here to where there's like two people who own everything, right? There's a bunch of authoritarians that are trying to take over the planet. How'd we get here? It didn't happen by accident. You know, I, I'm not advertising for Soviet-style communism because I went to the Soviet Union in 1984. It was completely broken. But you at least had some other system. Today, it's the market. The market is God. You tell someone who's under 20, uh, you're a sellout. They think it means you have no more tickets left. <laughs> they don't know what it means. So where does that leave us? The whole point is to inspire creativity, to inspire a world which is creating artists at a rapid rate. And instead, what we teach is, oh, that's a good franchise. Get into that franchise. We used to think of franchises as McDonald's and Burger King. Now we talk about it with cinema. What happened? Something happened. Why aren't we talking about that more? Where is the critique of capitalism itself, which has led to a system of horrendous inequality? So when you ask me about where we are today, we're in deep trouble. 
And it's up to artists to show what's wrong because it's not coming from anywhere else, I can tell you that. So that's my own view. <laughs>